system gear fun. Gambling made it profitable to have fights all the time because people loved gamble. So they'd have all these people fighting and ties, they even altered their style to accommodate the gambling. Like the first round, they would go real slow because they wanted everybody to place their bets. So Pete, they would just take it slow and everybody knew the fight didn't really begin to the second or the third round. So it wasn't like American fighting where you would have like a Mike Tyson who'd be cherished for knocking people out very quickly. Like, like what, like there'd be over under bets. Is this guy, is Tony Tubbs going to last the first three, three minutes of the fight? You know, is Michael Spinks going to last the first three? Like world-class fighters. Dude. Imagine getting hit by Mike Tyson when he was 20 years old. <laughs> imagine, imagine how horrible that would be. He was at the fights this past weekend. I said hi to him. I went, hi, Mike. <laughs> That's so weird. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. He's still a tank, too, dude. Yeah. Terrifying looking person. Like, uh, there's a video of him hitting the bag. He's like 51 years old or something like that. Hitting the heavy bag. And you're like, oh, okay. He could still fuck you up. 100%. Like, in terms of, like, retired heavyweight champions, there was a trend that existed, you know, where the, someone would retire and then they would, you know, they wouldn't, they wouldn't keep their form. They would get heavy. And that happened with Mike. He got, like, very heavy. Look at this. 49-year-old type. 49. So this is, like, two years ago. Yeah. Dude, <laughs> fuck all this. Give me some volume. Dude. Wow. Fuck that. Dude. 49-year-old Mike Tyson will put you to sleep. Yeah. 100%. And when you're around him, you realize, you're like, you just... Who is that? The rapper Meek Mill. Oh, that's sad. Oh, Jeez. Meek. Yeah. See, I blame his trainers right there. Well. If I was the guy holding the camera, I'd be like, "Stop it." Okay. First of all, we got to straighten this whole thing out before you start hitting hard. You gotta, you gotta move. Look at all this. This might be just a personal trainer, not a boxing person. But I'm looking in the background, and I, I feel like I see boxing and. Stuff on the wall. Hey, play that. Play that video. Oh, Young yeah, Mike Tyson yeah. with custom motto. Oh my God! You want to change the way you feel about physics? Custom motto was old and dying. He was a really old guy, but he had just this deep knowledge of psychology and boxing, and he trained this unbelievably fast and powerful, talented kid who had massive hunger for success the, the whole story of mike tyson a lot is wrapped up in the story of custom Otto, who had been around forever and this is his last and greatest pupil and mike knew it mike knew it while it was happening and by the time he won the heavyweight championship custom Otto had already died but he dedicated it all to him there was nobody like him and you know people like they say, oh, you know, but he never fought Ali, and he never fought these guys. That you know, his era, people weren't as good. Maybe, maybe, but everybody in his era, he fucked up. All of them up until Spinks, or excuse me, until um, uh, Buster, Hendricks. Buster. No, yeah, well, Buster, yeah, Buster was the first one to beat him, but I meant uh, Holyfield. Yeah, that's how fucked up I am. I said Hendricks. <laughs> I was, I was trying to remember what the fight was. When Holyfield uh, beat Tyson, those two fights in a row, like that was that was big. And when Tyson bit his ear, like that was big. Like th th that was like when you realize like he's just not, he's not the same guy he was. We both lived in Columbus when Buster Douglas knocked him out. That was a crazy. Like he became the big, big fucking hero. No one knew who he was really. I feel oh, like yeah, when I was man. young, but and then he was supposed to take over the east side of the city. He was gonna like change everything, have a big giant boxing gym, and never happened. You know the story of Buster Douglas? It's an amazing story. His mom died. His mom died when he was in training for the fight. Oh, really? And all of his life, he had kind of been really talented as a boxer, but hadn't really completely dedicated himself to it. So when his mom died, he went completely insane in the gym in preparation for Tyson. And then when he came out there, he it was like two people that had the exact opposite things happen to them for tyson he had just been smashing everybody for so long he was so good and so scary he would win fights before they would even start it would just be a matter of whether or not you were going to make it out of the first round sometimes he was just smashing people but for buster douglas is like he had some good fights and some 
bad fights and he just wasn't he wasn't completely consistent but he was talented but then when his mom died it was right when the time when tyson was you know just overconfident he was a 46 to 1 underdog i think is that what it was mm -hmm. i think so it was marketed as tyson is back fight which i didn't oh wow i didn't know that yeah tyson is back i don't remember that what um what were the odds because i think it was one of the craziest odds of someone who won a fight 42 to 1 it says right yeah. 42 to 1 is a lot <laughs> that means you have to be a total sucker to bet on buster douglas but i'll take your money stupid yeah yeah i'll give you 4200 dollars if you give me 100. you know it's like they're so confident that tyson's gonna beat them they're willing to bet 42 times whatever you're gonna put up that to me is always i think bets i'm not telling you what to do but i think bets should be like I think actually I, I take it back. I think you should be able to do whatever you want. But I think the real bet should be who do you want who do you think is gonna win? Let's make it real clear. Who's gonna win? If you say, uh, well, uh, will Michael Spinks make it out of the first round, like, all right, now we're getting weird. Because this is some shit you might be able to affect. Maybe you might be able to talk to Michael Mike. There's a lot of money in this fight. But there's even more if we can get to the second round. You know what I'm saying, bro? You know what I'm I saying? I think the last bet I hit like that was Amanda Nunes. Yeah. KO in the second round, like specifically pick that. That's very important to protect against that kind of influence because that shit's real. That shit's happened throughout sports. If someone comes up to you and goes, Look, there's a lot of money if this fight goes into the third round. That's all we got to do. Look at here's the odds 72 to 1. 72 to 1, this fight goes to the third round. You know what that means? You let the fight go to the third round and we'll make a lot more yeah. money. 